Last Bastion is a remake of the classic cooperative game Ghost Stories. That is a game that I love when it came out in 2008, I believe. And you have to remember, back then, we didn't have as many cooperative games as we have nowadays. Ghost Stories has to be one of those pioneering games that really brought visibility to the mechanics, together with, of course, Arkham like Horror and Pandemic. But again, remember, back in the day, that was one of the main options. In Ghost Stories, as in Last Bastion, the players control a group of four Four heroes or up to four heroes that are defending a central area that is being attacked by monsters from all directions. In Ghost Stories you had a traditional Japanese element mixed with fantasy. Here in Last Bastion we have a traditional high fantasy. Elves, uh, demons, uh, orcs and that sort of monsters. Now let me show you what we got here. The game counts with eight characters, which is already an improvement by, uh, when compared to Ghost Stories, in which you always had the same four characters. Here you have eight characters, and four are male heroes and four female heroes, because that is just the right thing to do. Each hero comes with a board, and each board is double-sided. One side to show when the hero is healthy, and if the hero is reduced to zero life points, the board is temporarily removed. If the hero is, is resurrected or reinvigorated, brought back uh, to action, then use this at the side of the board to indicate the fact that the hero does not have the special ability that they have at the beginning, as indicated by that icon that you don't see on the other side. Also, the second time that the hero goes down to zero life points, the hero is out of the game for good. So you can play with up to four heroes and up to four players. I like to play the game with always four heroes, regardless of the number of players, and then simply we split the heroes accordingly. The game is also playable solo, and in fact, recently I've been playing it solo with four heroes. Here I've set up the game with the four female heroes ready to fight. So you have first a central area with nine tiles that are interchangeable. You can mix them in a random configuration so that the village will look different every time and also here you have a frame to hold the to hold the castle in position which is an improvement from ghost stories you see this frame here then we have these boards that are associated with a color each has a symbol here and three car slots each car slot facing a space on the board and then you connect each color board with the hero board and you mark the connection between the hero and the color by placing a color base on the miniature. And this is a way that allows you to have four colors but more than four heroes available in the game. Also you have spaces that do different things and that's why we have some plastic pieces that we did not have before. We have a place where you can hang a standard that will make it hard for, that will weaken the monster so that kind, a net that will block their abilities and then we have a trap similar to the Buddha in the original game when the monsters land on this thing they are pulverized. We have tokens, uh, the heroes start with a color token and there are uh, tokens of different colors. They can be spent during combat as sort of discounts to make it easier to eliminate the enemies. You have a call to arm token, you start with one, you spend it during the game, there are ways of reacquiring some of those and they will allow you to activate uh, locations on the board as extra actions life points so when they go down to zero we mention the best stuff that happens and then again each hero has a special ability she can attack at a distance uh, we have the bard that can place this token on a monster sort of hypnotizing it with her singing and that reduces the strength of the monster uh, the warrior there can reroll dice she can move and attack or attack she can move and take an action or take an action and move uh, whereas other heroes usually can only do one now players will alternate activating the heroes so when a hero activates first you activate the board 
if there already are three cards here, you don't draw any new monster cards, you simply activate the effect indicated by the icon there, which is bad. Otherwise, you draw a card and you place it according to a specific set of rules. There is a deck of monster cards uh, here in the top left corner. You have the life points, so to speak, and the number of energy that it takes to remove them. So you would need a single red result, red icon to defeat this one, two blue icons to defeat this enemy, and so on and so forth. You shuffle all of these enemies together, and then you count eight from the bottom, and then you take one of the big bad bosses, you shuffle, you shuffle this deck of big bad bosses randomly, and you place one there, and then the rest of the shuffle deck on top. So what you're trying to do is to survive long enough until you encounter the bad guy and you defeat the bad, the, ba the big bad uh, boss and you survive the end of the turn in which you defeat the big bad boss. If you do so, you win the game. Players lose the game if all of the heroes are defeated. If a card should be drawn from the deck at the beginning of a turn and there isn't one, so when the the final boss shows up you only have a limited number of turns, which can be even reduced because there are game effects that remove cards from the bottom of the deck, dang it. Also, there are game effects that will place these uh, evil tokens here. They may end up being on the player's boards blocking their abilities, or they may be on the board in the Bastion, in which case they also block, by the way, the special ability of the Bastion. If there ever are three of these things on the board, the players also lose the game. But back to the beginning of your turn, where remember, unless your board is full, you have to draw a card. If the card that you draw is of a color of a board, so yellow, green, blue or red, the card goes in an empty slot on that board. If the board is already full, it goes wherever else. If the card is black, you put it on the board of the active player, the one for whom we have been drawing. Icons at the bottom tell you there are effects that happen when the game when the monster enters the board. Then effects that happens every turn during the main activation, and then effects that happen when the monster is defeated and leaves the board, which may be good, like in this case you get a token as a reward, or also maybe bad. And so you simply, well, you do that. Suppose we drew this card here, does the card that we drew is yellow. Incidentally, we are doing yellow, so we do that. There is no entry effect. And that's, and that's how it works. But remember, it's bad if your things, if the boards are full just because they keep doing bad stuff. For example, during the main activation of return, this monster will roll this die against the active player, which causes new cards to come out, evil to be placed, uh, the active hero to lose health uh, or health and tokens. Just bad, 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 bad stuff. So new monsters will be added constantly throughout throughout the game. And suppose that we got this, and then we got this that goes there. And then this other one goes here, and so on and so forth. So yes, they will tend to go where the color is. But again, we have the black cards, and then the ones that are bounced because a board is full. So, is this player's turn, for example, now we resolve these effects, uh, we roll the die, then we look at that effect, which is, if there isn't any evil token on the card, we place an evil token on the card. If there already is one at the time of, uh, that we activate the effect, then we plus put it on the bastion, on the area of the bastion adjacent to it, blocking the ability of that area. That means that these people will throw an evil token on the board every other turn unless they are stopped. Find it is time for our heroes to activate. In this case, she is the active hero and then she gets to act. When you activate the hero, you can usually either move or take an action. Move, you can move to an adjacent space orthogonally or diagonally. Taking an action may be that you take the action associated with the space in which you land unless it is occupied by a token. 
In some cases, for example, I can sacrifice a life to defeat a monster, just like that, sacrifice of blood, and I summon some evil spirit. I may be able to place, if I am there and I activate that ability, I place this trap on the ability of a monster, and so that ability is not working. If I go to the area with the standard, then I take one of these standards here, and I place it on that little stand and that means that all monsters in play of that color have the resistance the number of life points here reduced by one in combat which also means to my understanding that if the monster only has one then in combat the monster will be automatically defeated but you still need to a combat action to remove that enemy and you have other things of that kind. Uh, some abilities will allow you to move, hoard cards around to restore uh, enemies, uh, I mean, to restore friends that have been defeated, to acquire some of these tokens, etc. etc. Another action that you can uh, perform and you will want to perform is to fight. To fight, you will roll these three dice and you're trying to produce the icons that are indicated there. Incidentally, if you're in a corner facing multiple enemies, you can split the result of your dice among multiple ones and be able to defeat multiple ones. Because actually, not only do you get to roll the dice and each symbol matches one on the card, so yellow to match yellow, white is a wild, you can use whatever you want, but you can also spend the tokens from your own board. So for example, this hero is attacking there, she can spend this one, this is on their board. If there are other heroes in the same space as you, they can also contribute their tokens. And remember, you also have these tokens here, which allow you to activate a location on the board from wherever you are, in addition to whatever else you're doing. So she's attacking and she rolled uh, this one, which doesn't do much, but, oh, actually, now that I look more carefully, she had rolled two white and she can also spend this one, it's three yellow, then she gets to defeat that one and she also gets the reward of the icon indicated there and we discard the card. And this is in essence how, how it works really. Monsters keep coming out, you will keep moving around, desperately coordinating with your friends so that you can collect these extra tokens and put them together, weaken monsters with various effects so you can eliminate them, prioritize because, because certain monsters are more annoying than others, others are still clogging your board and causing negative effects, but then there are the ones that cause dice to be stolen, uh, tokens uh, to become unavailable, and again, of course, the terrifying thing that the evil creeps onto the board and leads you closer to defeat. So it's turn. Add a card. It sounds complicated, but it'll figure out how to add the card. Resolve the effect of the entry monster. Resolve recurrent effects on your board or the board effect if your board was full. Take an action that is move or attack or activate the location in which you are. Use your special actions and continue like this until either you defeat the big bad boss or you meet one of the several conditions that will lead you to lose the game. Ghost Stories. I love the game. It's right here in the back. Uh, here. I love the game. I played the heck out of it when it came out uh, some time ago now. In fact, it was pretty much early in my phase of returning to the to the gaming hobby after the the break the hiatus during college years i love ghost stories i played the heck out of it when i saw that there was a game that was by the same designer and cooperative i thought wow maybe it has some similarities to ghost stories i had to try and i have to tell you when i was reading a rule book i was a little bit disappointed by seeing how similar the game was just because i did not expect a remake of ghost stories and then I played the game and you know what? I'm fine with a remake of Ghost Stories because the original game is great and this remake is, is great too. 
It has all of the things that you that you loved in ghost stories already, like the sense of mounting dread, the terrible difficulty, the different powers, etc. etc. But it is not just a reskinning of the same design, it does add more. I love the fact that we have more characters. Right there, the game already had a lot of replay value because of the variable uh, village, because of the variable order of the of the vill of the of the evil people, the final the different final villain, but then you only had four heroes. Now the only element where I can think that you could add more variety was in more heroes and that's what we got here and to me that is great. So many heroes, you do not have to use the same heroes every time. You can mix and match, that just adds a lot to it. And then you have different ways in which the villains operate and they add that evil, they add those evil tokens to the board and the different things that you can do, some things you recognize, like, you know, placing a mine that will destroy the monsters when they get there. It was a statue of the Buddha back then, now you have a car full of explosives, which I have to tell you, is even more fun than to, than to have the Buddha and imagine that that is some sort of spiritual uh, dissolving into thin air. No, you're blowing them into next week with a cart full of dynamite. How great is that? And then you have those other actions that you can do that you didn't have before. I like it. I like it very much. It has all the things that I like about ghost stories plus these interesting new actions, new interactions. I don't know if it will fully replace ghost stories. I may still play ghost stories, but in a certain sense, this one does what ghost story does, plus more. But ghost stories, what it has is a different atmosphere, a different flavor. There's one negative thing about Last Bastion is that they replace a theme which was so unique in, in ghost stories with a more generic high fantasy setting and we just have many of those these days. I wouldn't have minded to see, well, again, just a different setting with monsters, with warriors, but less just your your stereotypical halflings and, and elf, etc, etc. I'm always happy when I find a bard. Bards, I think, they are must misunderstood and undervalued category in fantasy role-playing games and in board games, when I can, I always, when I can in a game, I always play the bard, and there's a cool bard. I'm always happy when I see a bard that can hypnotize people with her singing and still kick some butt. So there is that. It explores past the, the, the classic two, three stock characters that we have in fantasy, in high fantasy games, but it remains, it's a little less, more, less unique as a setting than you have in ghost stories. But it is a good game, but it is a really good game, excellent, because you have great gameplay, great interaction. It's a cooperative game done right in the cooperative element that it doesn't feel like multiplayer solo with a common objective. People do have to plan because they have to meet in certain places so they can put their tokens together. They can chain off effects. Okay, you are going to go there and reduce the power of the, of the enemies using the standard so that then Jim and I can meet in that other place and put together resources and attack the weakened monster. And we do that in a corner where maybe if we're lucky we can attack two monsters and so on and so forth. And then possibly you heal me or possibly you do that attack or possibly you do that other thing. Cooperative games are many cooperative games that really treasure, emphasize uh, true synergies among players and not as many and ghost stories they did very well and Last Bastions does this too. It's a simple game although if you're playing with casual gamers or non-gamers they can get a little overwhelmed at the beginning by the number of icons, by the effects that apply in different parts of the turn, the boards that work differently, whether they are full or not, the locations on the board and the abilities of the players. For us regular gamers, we speak Iconese, really we read Iconese, we don't verbalize those icons, but we read Iconese, we are used to learn Iconese for common humans that can be a little harder. So, you know, maybe with not the most casual players in your group, but then also if you prepare them, maybe that's gonna be the next step up for them. So Last Bastion, it is a really fun game. It is exciting, it 
emphasizes true cooperation among players. It has a fun, if a little, generic theme, but most importantly, great gameplay, great synergies, and even more replay value, even more variability than the original Ghost Stories. Overall, a truly great game.